bust his back. Let's see how this goes. Alright man, torture talk. Like, share, subscribe to the page. You know what it is. Today I want to review the new Busta Rhymes album. Before I get into that, make sure y'all like, share, subscribe to the page. Hit the thumbs up. If you don't like the content, hit the thumbs down. I would like for you to hit the thumbs up though. <laughs> but anyway, I gotta be real. Um, also too, if you want to donate, the Cash App link is in the description. And uh, if you want to comment on my video, just make sure y'all comment. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Alright man. Busta Rhymes. Extension level two, Wrath of God. Extension level event two, I should say, Wrath of God. Uh, full disclosure, never really been a big Busta Rhymes fan, even from Scenario, Scenario Remix. I always thought he killed the verse, but I don't know, he just never did it for me. Maybe he was just too animated, I don't know. But I do know that this video I'm going to remove all my bias. So let's just keep it there. Okay, so with the Extinction Level Event 2 Wrath of God, I went into this project with the mind state of I'm going to listen to this as just a hip hop album I'm, or artist that I've never heard before because I know how I can get. When, I, when it comes to Busta Rhymes. Sometimes I think he overdoes it. Sometimes I think he, he does too much. Uh, just to prove a little point. Or sometimes I just think don't, he, he doesn't really hit the points that I think he should hit. So, I went into this project non-biased. So, let's start out with the production. Production was heavy. It was heavy. This was one of those... I enjoyed the production. Some of the beats, well maybe two of the beats I didn't think were really good. But the production was heavy. You can tell whoever did this production, and I think it was Knife Wonder had a lot to do with it. He crafted a narrative around this production. So I really appreciated the production on this album. I thought that uh, maybe two of the songs I thought was, I didn't like the beats at all. But for the majority, Production was hit. Really sound good in the car. Uh, you know. So let's get into the uh, the the sound quality. Again, maybe not as the production, because the production to me was the high point in this album. The sound quality on this album was more in the lines of it was borderline good to okay to me. Some of the beats. I think we're a little bit too, too, I would say eerie in the sound, but the beat was still hitting in my car. So I listened to it in my car, I also listened to it in my headphones, and it actually sounds better in my headphones than my car. So I don't know how that worked out, but it actually did. And um, I think that they could have uh, maybe tweaked it a little bit, the sound quality, but it didn't really take too much away from the uh the production or the overall aspect of the album but i just think that it was borderline good to okay to me um then we get into the lyrics and this is where i say that removing all my bias for uh this artist why i say that it was the weak point of the album but at the same time it really didn't take away from the album. So when I say weak point, if I had to judge all of those three different categories, I would say a 10, 9, and a strong 8 out of all of those three categories, if I had to judge them. So I would say that even with the lyrics being sometimes generic, it really wasn't, uh, really wasn't that bad. So getting into it. I think I think Busta Rhymes sometimes what he does is he hits you with a barrage of things that sound pretty good, but then when you break it down, he's really saying a bunch of nothing. But 
it really calls for, I would say sometimes what he does, it really doesn't call for him to say a lot. And I think that that's what, where his Achilles heel and where his strength is at. Because Busta is a very good person when it comes to rapping and placing words on beats. I think that he's a master at the what flows and he can he can kind of do whatever he want when it comes to manipulating words to beats. So it'll kind of like Eminem in a way, but um, I think that sometimes Busta is a very, he, he likes to prove that he can really do it, you know what I'm saying? And it's nothing wrong with that, it's just, that's, I guess that's the same thing. Eminem falls into that category where he likes to prove that he likes, he can do this, the same thing. So with that being said, um, some of the tone of the album I get, and maybe it's just me when it comes down to, and again, I said I removed my bias, and this has nothing to do with Buster, but maybe it's just me, and I just don't really want to hear the absolute wokeness of rappers who've been doing it for all this time, and then all of a sudden. So maybe because it goes with the theme of the album, I guess, but at the same time, I just don't want to hear it. Like, I don't want to hear this this preaching to me telling me how I should think type of mentality you know what I'm saying when oh, I, let's just be clear like some people have difference of an opinion doesn't make them less of a person you know and sometimes I feel like when a lot of these rappers they come off like that where when they spit in these bars they talking to you personally even though they really not but some people take it as they are they talking to you personally and it comes off as if you're speaking down on people and I get it you know but sometimes when you you have two different meanings in an album you can't really it's just to me it sounds like entertainment because if you're gonna talk about being strictly woke then you're talking about other things that have nothing to do with being strictly woke it just falls flat to me so some of the stuff that I think, like with the Farrakhan feature, and I like how he had, I think Chris Rock did this on somebody else's album before too, but like how he had the Chris Rock uh, features on throughout the album. I thought this was a complete hip hop album, I should say. From the, it sounded like something from the 90s. And, and to be fair, Busta Rhymes is, is, is an older artist, and I don't think that he really, uh, tries to appeal to to newer so he always he always tries to make a new sound and does something new and trying to you know throw something into the hip-hop game that has never been said or done before you know don't these people want to jump 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 don't these people want to like you know what i'm saying he does different things but for me uh another thing pro another problem that i have with and it has nothing to do with buster it has a lot to do with hip hop fans in general. And the problem I have with these these reviewers and these bloggers and these hip hop fans is they don't treat they don't treat other hip hop artists who do music on the lines of this the same way. Cause it's it's kinda like when an artist does an album that is similar to this or a woke album, they'll say, Oh, that's too woke or nobody wants to hear that. Like everybody, the, most of the reviewers that I know, that's what they do, or the hip hop fans. But then when it's somebody's legendary who does things like this, who does a, a woke album that they like, then all of a sudden it's like a brand new. Oh, I can't believe that this person did it. This is this is this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. And that's the problem that I have when it comes to bloggers when they not being fair to everybody. So, like, for example, there are a couple of different albums that came out that are actually, to me, they're actually better than this album that came out that's on the same lines as this, but no one's giving this, uh, giving this, them albums critically acclaimed albums, or they really did this, did, and they're lyrically better, and the production is better. So, I don't know, maybe it's because they have a bias towards Busta Rhymes, or maybe because they didn't, they, Busta Rhymes haven't done nothing since for years, so maybe that's the reason why, who knows? But I just don't think it's fair. And that's just my little rant. But outside of that, I'm going to give this album a strong 8. Matter of fact, you know, I'm going to give it a solid 9. 
this album is a solid nine. And what for the for the reason why it's a solid nine is because it still gives you that feel of the nineties. It gives you that feel of the nineties and it takes you to a place. This album is an album that I would say, if I never heard this guy before, I would say this is a great album. You know? And it takes you to a place where it puts you into a different place. And when albums like that for me, whether I like the artist or not, if it takes you to a different place, I can't really give it a bad score. You know, because it's like it's like reading a book. You know, looking at a book is like it looks boring, but once you get into the book, you're like, oh wow. And you into it. And that's how I feel about this album. It takes you on a journey. And some of the stuff is all over the place and some of the stuff I didn't like. But I don't like everything in a movie and I don't like everything in a book. So, that being said, I gave this album a solid 9. And for me, I'm probably not going to listen to it again. Because I didn't have anything on it where it was my favorite. Maybe the Ross feature. But I'm not going to probably repeat it. But I can understand why people really like it. You know, so... Solid nine. Buster rhymes. Buster. And it gonna roll in. Torture talk.